Hello and welcome. My name is Lexi Jong and today we're going to be talking about a few new makeup items. We have the three new shades of the Gucci blushes. These were available at Nordstrom, which is where I picked mine up. And they have since disappeared from the website. I'm not sure if they were pulled because they were released too early or what the deal is, but they are coming back. They are an extension of the permanent line. So these blush shades are not limited edition. And then we also have another extension to uh, another line. These are the Givenchy La Rouge Sheer Velvet Lipsticks. This is one of my all time favorite lipstick formulas. They released three new shades. We're gonna talk about those. We also are going to talk about the new Givenchy Balm. So this is the Lantern de Balm. So they had one of these previously a while back. It's been gone for a while and they have brought it back. It's a little bit different than the previous version. Don't think I have the older one anymore, but you know, we're going to talk about that as well. So we're going to start off with my nails today and I wanted to give a shout out and a great big thank you to London Town USA for sending me their summer hot tropic collection. So if you're not familiar with London Town USA, you can buy these directly from London Town, which is where I typically make my purchases, but they have them on other department stores and so forth as well, like Neiman Marcus and so forth. These are a clean beauty nail polish. So they're something that I feel comfortable using on my children. Now, a lot of nail polish brands like OPI and Zoya and so forth, they all, you know, remove certain, you know, highly problematic ingredients, uh, you know, like toluene and so forth. We've been seeing that for, I don't know, at least a decade where uh, companies announce that they are not using that in their formula. There's been like top five, top seven, top nine that have been removed. London Town actually gets rid of 21. So they're considered a 21 plus free formula. So just something to note there if that's something that you have been looking into. Another thing to know about London Town nail polishes, and this will be important to a few of my viewers who I know have been looking for things in this category, but they are vegan and they are breathable, gluten-free and cruelty-free. So just something to note there. I just wanted to show you the shades here. So we have five different shades in the collection. So I did Skittle nails, but starting off, let's start off with this thumb here, which is the same as this pinky. This is Violet Hibiscus. Next, we have the green, which is Tipsy Mermaid. The orange is Heat Wave. And then we have the pink shade is a Teeny Keeny. And you can see this is kind of like a warm, bright pink. And then last up, we have the, sorry, <laughs> this is Flush Cheek. So this is more of like your magenta pink. And I have to say, I really like all of these colors. I've been using London Town USA nail polishes for a few years and, you know, longevity wise, these are, these are good. They're going to give you, I'd say average longevity on the nails. I don't have a top coat on, so I will typically wear them without a top coat for maybe three to four days before changing them. So they are longer than some of my polishes. If you're going with, you know, like a sheer color versus something that might have some grit in it, those polishes tend to chip more quickly for any brand. I'm not talking about London Town in particular here, but you know, if you're looking at a smooth lacquer nail polish, you know, these will give me about three to four days, no chipping with no top coat. Now, if you do use top coat, obviously you can prolong the life of those. Compared to the new Chanel nail polishes, I would say that those are a thicker formula and they last, you know, they're gonna last, mm, I wouldn't say twice as long, but almost twice as long without chipping on natural nails with no top coat, but they're also thicker. And yeah, so obviously if you're looking for something vegan, 21 plus free and so forth, the London Town is going to give you a great wear and they have an expansive set of colors. They also have these nail polishes that I like called the nail concealers, which are really nice when you don't, you want, it's almost like a jelly nail polish in the deeper colors, but they have the light ones that kind of just, you know, camouflage slightly your, your nail a little bit. Like there's nothing really there. So anyway, let's go ahead and move on to the Gucci blushes. So. There are three new shades. We have, again, an extension to the permanent line. So we have shades seven, eight, and nine. So seven is true pink. 
And you can see here that this looks to be a cooler pink. We are gonna compare these to all of the shades of the Gucci blushes. So I have all of the other ones, but let's start off with swatching these. So this here is shade seven. And you can see it is gonna be a soft, cool tone pink. And I think it's really beautiful. So we're gonna leave some space there so we can compare the other shades. And let's go ahead and take a look at shade eight, which is soft red. So soft red in the photos actually looked more like a warm red in person it looks more like a deep peach. It doesn't look quite as red as I expect it. So just something to note there. You can see that there is a touch of red in there, but it's really more of just kind of like a deep burnt peach, maybe even a little terracotta mix in there, but I don't really consider it a red blush per se. And this one here is number nine, Intense Plum. And I have to say, I love the color of this is gorgeous. This is going to be a deep blush. You can definitely sheer it out. And on my cheeks right now, I have a very softly applied mix of the Intense Plum and the True Pink kind of together. So right now, let's take a look at the cheek demos. And for the cheek demos, I did the right side with the Sonia G Classic Cheek Brush that's undyed goat hair. It's going to be a little bit more dense. It's giving you a little bit more of a denser application, a stronger application on the cheeks. On the left side, I use the Surratt Cheek Brush, which is made out of you know very soft squirrel hair, so that's going to give you a softer application. However, if you take a look at these swatches, you can see that this particular formula works very well with a variety of brush brushes. So you can see that, you know, with the goat hair versus the squirrel hair, we're getting almost the same level of pigmentation. So you just need to build it up. And, you know, yes, the goat hair will give you a stronger application, but they're pretty close. They are definitely closer than many other formulas. And that's just gonna show you how silky this formula is. I personally really like the Gucci blush formula. I think it's a very nice formula. When you actually touch it with your fingers, you can feel a little bit of grip from the powder onto your skin. So it stays put, at least for me, it stays put all day. And they've got a great shade range. A couple of the shades, the other pinks, they're kind of similar. We're gonna take a look at those though. Now, just for some details on the product. So the packaging, it's gonna match the other ones. We've got kind of that soft blush pink on the top with the gold stars. There is a click closure and we have five and a half grams of product, a two year shelf life, and these are made in Italy. I have to say, I think they are a great product. We do have a mirror inside the case. It takes up the entire, you know, top case portion of there. And technically there is a spot for you to remove these pans. So technically the container is refillable. However, I have not seen them actually sell refills at this time, but I have been told by customer service that it is something that is planned for the future. Nobody seems to know how long in the future though, but I think overall Gucci is working on creating refillable products in the long run. So it's, it just sounds like it's taking a long time. So the blush holds up all day. It looks great. I'm a little hot, a little sweaty at the moment. I've been putting together a dog greet. So anyway, uh, yeah, overall, uh, it's, a, it's a great blush in my opinion. So let's go ahead and take a look at some comparisons. So just a quick look at the packaging here. You can see this is really pretty. It's got some heft to it. You know, there's definitely some metal components. We do have plastic in here as well. So the actual closure here is one of those like toggle buttons and yeah overall really nice packaging this one here is zero one silky rose okay so i'm gonna put the silky rose right here so you can see it next to the true pink but then i'm going to add the other ones down here i'm going to add one through six down here, just so you can kind of see the whole line all at once as well. This one here is number two, Tender Apricot. This is gonna be significantly lighter 
than the soft red, but you can see that they both still have a bit of a peachy vibe. This is obviously gonna be a little bit more orange. There's some more golden tones in here. It's kind of like that soft mandarin orange shade uh, compared to this, which definitely is a little bit more burnt orange, little bit of red in there. But again, I think it's more of a deep peach. This one here is three, Radiant Pink. So you can see that the pinks in the previous ones are both gonna be warmer. So this is one, this is three, this is seven. So it was really a great addition to add number seven, the true pink. I think it really fits well with this particular line. I'd love to see something with a little lavender as well. This one here is number four, Bright Coral. And I really like this one. This was uh, actually the first one I got. This was the first one that released. You can see, I don't really consider it a true coral. It's a little bit peachier than a true coral. In my opinion, a true coral should have a 50-50 mix of the orange and the pink. And I feel like this is more 60-40, um, um, maybe even 65-35. So, you know, I, I feel like it's definitely a little bit stronger on the warmer tones. And this has been my favorite of the Gucci blush shades. This is number five, Rosy Beige. This is like your perfect neutral. So it's kind of like this nude mauve shade. You've got a touch of mauve in there, but you definitely have those nude brown tones. It's pretty neutral on the spectrum. It leans slightly cool, but it's mostly just smack dab in the middle neutral. And this one here is six, Warm Berry. So this is our deepest shade. This is a really great deep burgundy. There's a touch of brown, like a touch of a cocoa brown in there as well. I think it's a really pretty shade. This is one that for me, I have to use very sparingly. It's pretty pigmented. So these are gonna be our nine Gucci blushes. We have seven, eight, nine, one, two, three, four, five, six. So I'd love to know which one your favorite is. Let's go ahead and do a few more comparisons. Sisley Fido Blush in number one, Pink Peony. I really wanted to see how this compares to True Pink, but I can tell already it's definitely warmer. This is the Valentino Blush in shade number three. This has got a bit more like of a purpley glint there, but I did want to see how that compares. You can see, yeah, you definitely notice the purple more in the Valentino. It's a little bit cooler than the True Pink. This is the Chantecaille Akoya. This is from the Holiday Collection uh, a little while ago. And this, I think this is a gorgeous shade. So here's Akoya. You can see this has like a pearly finish, but color wise, this is a little bit warmer than the Gucci, but they do have a, a similarity there. You know, if you're trying to keep down your makeup purchases out and you already have the Chantecaille, I'd say it's, it's close enough. This is Surat Barb a Papa, and this is the closest Surat shade. You know, we're running out of space here, so I'm gonna just kind of re-swatch the Gucci one right here. All right, so here's the Gucci. Let's just go ahead and put it right there. You can see it's definitely, the Gucci's a little bit cooler in tone. There's a little bit more of a magenta touch, like a hint of it, in the Surat. And then the last one for the pink, this is the Armani in 52. So this is the new Armani. Let's go ahead and we'll put that one right there. And you can see compared to the Gucci, those are pretty close. So again, you know, I think those two shades are pretty similar. Just like the Surat, this has a little bit more magenta, yet it's cooler than the Surat. The coolness is about the same as the Gucci. It's just gonna be a little bit deeper in color. Let's take a look. This is the uh, Armani in shade number 40. So let's see how this compares with the soft red and the intense plum, I'll just put that right there. And you can see it's kind of a mix of those two shades. You've got the depth of color of intense plum, but you have a little bit more warmth that you see in the soft red. This is Syrah and Briant, and I wanted to see how this compared to the soft red. You can see this is actually an orange shade. It's definitely more vibrant. And this is Classique, which is actually a cooler tone red, but I wanted to put that next to the Intense Plum. You can see that the Syrah has more red in it instead of the berry that you have in the plum. This is the Tom Ford Duo in number two, Explicit Flush. We're gonna take a look at this peachy shade here. And let's go ahead, you know what, I'm gonna squeeze that in right there. Now, this one's more corally. 
Let's go ahead and reapply the soft red. We're gonna go right here down the arm and we'll add a few more swatches. We're gonna go into Tom, Flo four, Tom Ford number four, Cherry Blaze. So let's look at this lighter shade here. That's definitely softer in color. And then the other shade with it is gonna be more pink. And then I want to take a look at this Chantecai Anemone shade with the plum. Those are kind of close. The intense plum here, this has more berry in it versus the Chantecai here, which has a bit more pink. So the Chantecai is actually a little bit warmer in tone, but again, those are gonna be fairly close. So those are all of my comparisons for the Gucci blushes. Overall, I think the three shades that they added to this line are really a great addition. But, you know, I have to say, I really do actually like all three of the shades that were added, but probably the, the True Pink and the Intense Plum are my favorite, followed by the Soft Red. However, I, I do, I think the Soft Red is a little special. I don't have anything quite like that shade in my collection. So I'm very ha happy to have all three of those. Let's go ahead and move on to the Givenchy Lipsticks. All right, so we're gonna start off with the Givenchy Balm. This is called the Le Rouge Entredi Balm. And there are two shades, there's a clear one, and then there's number 10. And number 10 is a pH indicator shade. So this, it looks black. You can see you've got the Givenchy logo going all around. You have kind of your classic Givenchy case uh, that matches the other lipsticks, like the Silk Intense lipsticks and the previous version. And yeah, overall, very nice product. This does not seem to be refillable, by the way, whereas the other lipsticks are. So just something to know. So let's go ahead and take a look at this here on my hand. We'll put it right here on the side. So one sheer layer, and you can watch that color develop. What I really love about the Givenchy, um, you know, pH changing ones, I love these black ones because they change to a berry shade instead of that bright pink. So on my lips, they just work really well with my coloring, so they are a favorite of mine. And let's move on to the swatches of the others, and you can see this in a little bit after it has sat. So we have three new shades to the La Rouge Sheer Velvet Lipstick. This one here is shade number nine. And most of the shades in the La Rouge Sheer Velvet are going to be deeper, and then the lightest shade previously was a bit warmer. So shade number nine, actually is a little bit cooler in tone. Let's go ahead and extend that all the way. So you can see one sheer layer versus building it up. I love this formula. We'll talk more about the formula in a minute, but shade number nine, you're looking at kind of a soft nude pink. On my lips, I have this shade here, number 50. And by the way, these are all refillable and these colors don't seem to have names. Usually they have names. Um, but there are no names on the packaging or the outer box. So you can see that shade 50 here is kind of like a brick red, which typically is gonna be very warm. This one actually has a touch more coolness than others. So it, it makes it a little different. I, I feel like it looks a little bit different than my other ones that are similar. So I really like it. And again, that's the one I'm wearing right now. And then we have 52 which is kind of more of a terracotta brown shade. You've got some brown in here. This is gonna be a bit warmer. To me, this is like a quintessential fall color. So let's take a look at the lip swatches while we talk about the details. Let's start with the balm. And this is supposed to have 24 hour hydration. It has hyaluronic acid, jojoba seed, and some different flower extracts. It's supposed to hydrate and nourish your lips for 24 hours. And again, this is a pH adaptive shade, so you're supposed to get a naturally intensified lip color. You can use this on its own, or you can use it as a topper to kind of give a little bit more of a cooler tone to your lipstick. So it will definitely be cooler in tone. The case on these, by the way, is genuine leather. So it does say that this balm is refillable. So I guess it was just in there more securely, but it is a refillable product. And we have 3.4 grams of product in the balm. 
and they are made in France. Now, as for the La Rouge Sheer Velvet lipsticks, these are in the same packaging as the other La Rouge Sheer Velvets in the rest of the line. We have 3.4 grams of product as well. These are also made in France. We have kind of this soft pink velvet exterior, and these also are refillable or rechargeable. And these, according to Givenchy, have long lasting wear and comfort, preserved hydration, buildable intensity. And again, you have that velvet case. So I personally, this is one of my very favorite lipstick formulations, the sheer velvets. I love sheer velvet, uh, you know, lipsticks in general. I think they look great, but a lot of times they can be drying or very patchy. I feel like the Givenchy ones are the best. They are my favorite of sheer velvets <laughs> or sheer mattes in general. And I absolutely love these. I think they are so well made. I have had issues with a few of them in the past, you know, when they first brought these out, some of them were refillable and some of them weren't. And some of my refills uh, just weren't clicking in securely in the case. But I think, you know, now they've kind of worked out those bugs. I haven't had that issue with any recently. So overall, I have to say, I really love these. I think they are fantastic. And I love the new shades that they added to the collection. So let's go ahead and move on to some comparisons. This is the Givenchy Liquid Lip Balm in number 11. This is a pH adaptive shade in this formula. And you can see that beautiful, like cool tone, blackberry, kind of appearance there. And the liquid, it goes on a little bit more black, but you're going to get that same color at the end, just with a glossy finish. So again, it's another favorite of mine, and this works really well as a topper as well. I find the balm to be very comfortable and hydrating. It's actually, as soon as it came, I couldn't even wait to use it. I started using it, you know, right straight from when the package was delivered. So, uh, you know, it's just, I've always loved their balms in the past. And the original one was in more of this slim style packaging that we have the Rose Perfecto balms in now. Um, but now we've got this, you know, thicker, more, a little different packaging, more similar to the traditional La Rouge lipsticks. But again, we have more of a balm shape here and I just find it very comfortable and hydrating. So this is definitely a winner for me. It's going straight in my bag. All right, so let's go ahead. I have, I believe, all of the shades of the La Rouge Sheer Velvet Lipstick. So we're gonna swatch these in numerical order over here on my arm. Now, I'm not the best at swatching on this arm, so just a heads up here, but this one here is our new shade number nine. And yeah, we're not gonna have room to, to go ahead and do all of the um, you know double layers. So then we move on to number 10, Beige Nude. And let's see here. You can see Beige Nude actually, or Beige Nude looks similar, but it's gonna be actually a little bit warmer. It has a little bit more brown in there, whereas nine has a little bit more peach. And then now we have number 16, which is one of my favorites as well. And you can see that this one's gonna be a bit rosier. It's more of your soft, dusty rose shade, but it has a little bit, a little touch of mauve in there. And then we have 17 Rouge Erabla. So these older ones had names. I really liked having names on them personally. Um, but you can see that this one here is kind of a deeper, almost like a soft burgundy red. And that is definitely a favorite as well. That is one of their classic shades that they have in a variety of lipstick lines. This one here is number 23, Rose Irresistible. I love this one because you get kind of that bright pop of pink. And there aren't too many quite like that. This is a special shade in my opinion. It's also a little bit harder to find. Then we have 27, Rouge Infuse, or Infuse. And you can see this one is also gonna be a bit more of a deeper red, warm tone, really beautiful shade. This one here is 34, Rouge Saffron. And you can see that this is kind of a deeper orange. I mean, look at it compared to the soft red from the Gucci. Uh, you know, they're, they're kind of similar. It's almost like a deeper lipstick version of that blush shade. 36, Lantardi. <sighs> One of my absolute favorites. This is your 
cooler tone red it's actually more of a neutral red but it depends which formula you are looking at with the Givenchy but in this sheer velvet it actually is a little bit cooler than uh, in some of their other formulations so just something to know it's a favorite it's a classic shade but what they consider their classic red is actually this one 37 which actually has a bit more of a burgundy tint to it it's a cooler burgundy um i think it's a really beautiful shade and again that's another one that comes in a variety of formulations but it does seem slightly cooler in the sheer velvet then we have 39 rouge granat and i think this was one of the first ones i got it's kind of like a a nice plum berry kind of shade really beautiful Ugh, really like that one and then let's take a look at 50 and 52 here our newest ones and see how they go with our collection here so there's 50 and you can see that it's kind of in line with the other shades but it is different and then we have 52 here which I think was a welcome addition because this is a little bit different than everything else in here. You've got more brown, you've got kind of those warmer tones. Overall, I think that the entire line of lipsticks is fantastic. And yeah, I think there's something for everybody in this line. So I'd love to know which ones your favorites are. Let's just take a quick look at a few other lipsticks with these. So these are the new Givenchy Rose Perfecto Balms that just came out. And I wanted to compare the new shades here. This one here is 111, which is kind of this soft nude brown. And you can see that it's gonna be warmer in tone to number nine, and it's gonna have a glossier finish. But I did wanna see how those compared. I have to say, I really like how there's a bit of soft pink in this shade number nine compared to number 10 here. And yeah, let's actually, let's see how the number 111 actually goes with the number 10 here. Yeah, I think 111, it's still a little warmer than 10, but I think those are a pretty good approximation, just different finishes. This one here is 501. Let's put that one right here. That's gonna be closest to the shade 52, but there is a touch more red in the balm in 501. And then this one here is 302, which is going to be a bit more, it's a warmer, this is like, it's actually called warm maple, but I just felt like the, the color stories of these three were kind of similar to the color stories that came out in the velvets. So I just wanted to see what those differences were. Now I have to say, these new shades of the sheer velvets reminded me of some of the new Valentino nude lipsticks. This one here is 138. And I just wanted to see how that compares. This one's more orange. Here is 117, let's put that one there. And you can see that this one's gonna be a little bit cooler than shade 50, but they are kind of similar. And uh, yeah, just something to note. So the Valentino 117 is a little bit cooler than 50, but they're comparable. This one here is 77A, let's see how that compares. Well, I think, you know, this is a little bit warmer than 52. 52 has a little bit more of a cool vibe in there, a little bit more red. Um, but again, this is a slightly warmer version. They are close. And then this one here is 113. We'll squeeze that in here. Oh, let's see if we can squeeze in there. Uh, this one's going to be cooler in tone. And it has, yeah, it doesn't really have the red that you have in there. It actually is more like pink brown versus red brown. And then let's go ahead and swatch the last one from Valentino. This is 142. And let me just go ahead and put that up here. Let's try and squeeze it in here as well. And you can see this is gonna be a warmer, more red version of 50. So those are my comparisons for the Givenchy lipsticks. I'd love to know what your thoughts are on these. If you're interested in any of the products featured here today, please share down below in the comments. I hope you enjoyed this and we have more new stuff coming up next week that I'm in the process of testing now. So definitely stay tuned. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. It really would mean a lot. Thank you so much. I hope you have a wonderful day.